Hello friends! Today we will talk about the small island of Majingo, which is located in Africa in the eastern region of Lake Victoria. This island can be safely called the most densely populated island in the world. Here, over 100 people live on the territory of 2,000 square meters. However, there are rumors that many more people live there, about 500. After watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For a long time, the small island of Majingo on Lake Victoria was not populated. Only the evil spirit Kale lived there. At present, however, at least 130 people live on an island of only two thousandths of a square kilometer. The island does not belong to any of the neighboring countries, such as Uganda and Kenya. In addition, it is dominated by democracy, which is nevertheless rare in Africa. What's more, for a week, the inhabitants of Majingo earn almost three times more than their neighbors on the mainland in a month. So how do the islanders live, and where do they spend so much money? Lake Victoria in Africa has long been an inexhaustible source of fish for Uganda and Kenya. Over time, however, the freshwater fish population began to decline. Therefore, in the 60s it was decided to artificially increase it and the Nile perch was brought to Lake Victoria. Unfortunately, these huge and voracious fish quickly destroyed their smaller relatives. Of course, local fishermen began fishing for Nile perches and immediately selling them. Neither Uganda nor Kenya could ignore the growing demand for these fish. What's more, discussions about the small and well-located island of Majingo have been going on for a long time. During the dispute between the heads of state in 1991, two fishermen from Kenya, George Kaibel and Dalmas Tembo sailed to the island. Even the fact that there was an evil spirit on Majingo named Kale did not stop them from traveling. Because of the prospect of wealth before them, Fishermen spared no money to employ a powerful shaman for only 300 kilos of Nile perch. He carried out a ceremony to remove Kale's spirit from Majingo. So the road to the island was opened. Tembo and Kaibal initially lived only in two, but soon another 60 people joined them. The population of the island quickly rose to 130. According to data from 2009, these people previously lived in Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. Formally, the island does not belong to any neighboring country today, so Kaibal and Tembo declared it an independent republic. Many people supported them. At the very beginning, when Majingo had just settled, the locals were faced with a very big problem. Pirates who were constantly ruining the economy of the growing island, thefts, daylight robberies, Violence and constant threats were the reason fishermen asked the two countries Kenny and Ugan for help at the same time. Both countries responded immediately. In 2004, Uganda's Coast Guard set up its own outpost to protect Majingo Island from pirates, above the tent in which the post operated. The Uganda flag was fluttering. In exchange for protection against pirates and help, the governments of neighboring countries required the inhabitants of the island to pay taxes. Of course, nobody agreed. It even led to a series of conflicts between Kenya and Uganda. Coast guards of both countries destroyed the tents on the island and cut fishing nets. There were several clashes during which some of the island's inhabitants were killed. And Majingo itself, there were also several armed skirmishes between the Ugandans and the Kenyans living there, which resulted in the deaths of six people. Finally, an official commission was convened in 2009 to determine the status of the island. It was agreed that local fishermen on Majingo Island have to pay taxes in both Uganda and Kenya. In the same year, Kenyan police came to the island, led by the famous politician Julius Mutulag, who declared the island Kenyan territory. Exactly a day later, the Uganda government sent 60 armed soldiers there. The world press called these events the smallest war in Africa. Tensions on the island continue to this day. Constantly every two or three months there is a message that one of the countries is sending the army there again, raising the state flag and solemnly announces Majingo with its property. As a result, both neighboring countries began to manage the island which of course did not like the residents of Majingo. 
fishermen were forced to pay as much as 25% taxes on their profits to both Uganda and Kenya. In addition, they also transfer 10% of their profits to the authorities of Majingo itself. Despite this, no one is lost here. The Nile perch is still an expensive fish, and experienced fishermen earn from selling it from $300 to $400 a week. After paying taxes, they just want to spend the money. And there are plenty of entertainment places on Majingo. Before the mass migration, there was quite lush vegetation on the island of Majingo. Today, only a few trees remain. Local inhabitants live in cramps because there are no normal apartments on the island. There is also no hospital and people go to Uganda or Kenya for treatment. All residential buildings are made of metal profiles and do not have a bathtub or toilet, only kitchens and bedrooms. Therefore, the island's inhabitants wash and relax in the waters of Lake Victoria. The island is also without electricity, television, and the internet. Apparently, they don't need it at all. Fishermen spend all the time fishing, and their women cutting what their husbands catch. Women put most of the clean Nile perches on sale. The remaining fish, also after cleaning, hang on a fishing line or wire in narrow passages between buildings. In their free time, residents of the island of Majingo have fun. On the island, which area does not exceed half of the football field, there are really many places of entertainment. Majingo has as many as five bars, several hotels, its own pharmacy, and a beauty salon for women and men. There are even four brothels, in which local women work as priestesses of love. In bars and brothels you can freely trade alcohol and drugs, but only if the customers are the island's inhabitants. This is important because tourists often visit Majingo. For trips, several hotels were built of similar materials, as those used to build residential places. The more or less normal buildings on the island are a police station built by Ugandans and a small church. Ugandan policemen keep order on the island and help tourists. By the way, tourists cannot stay on the island for more than one day. This is a rule established by the honorary leaders Kaibal and Tembo who manage the affairs of the island. The Tembo and Kaibal leaders develop all the laws and rules of the island. They also discuss with another five leaders elected democratically by all the island's inhabitants. The Big Seven of Majingo makes all decisions only by voting. The regulations on the most populated island in the world are strict but fair. Leaders reserve the right to prosecute and punish offenders. Thieves are particularly severely treated. Since 1991, only six cases of theft have occurred on Majingo. With petty theft, the thief is beaten with straw lashes. In the event of greater theft or return to crime, the perpetrator is forever expelled from the island. This perspective is intended to be frightening, especially deserving fishermen. That is why there are practically no crimes on the island, although sometimes there are fights under the influence of alcohol. What's more, new arrivals who might be in conflict don't come permanently to Majingo. Anyway, strangers cannot settle on the island because the leaders forbade the construction of new houses. The inhabitants of Majingo Island have a real chance to avoid overcrowding. Unless strangers settle there, children are born regularly and in large numbers, despite the lack of medical care. Just 200 meters from the tiny island is Uzingo, another island whose surface is however, several times larger than Majingo. Residents are not in a hurry to move. Why? By an evil spirit. Kayla exiled from Majino just fled to Uzingo. There was one evil ghost not before him, Tuck. Two evil spirits on one island is too much. No shaman wants to banish them from Uzingo. Even for a ton of Nile perch, the large island remains uninhabited. There are several buildings where only scientists from different countries lie. They explore the flora and fauna of Lake Victoria while watching their neighbors from Majingo Island. Evil spirits Kalo and Tuck are doing them no harm. This is understandable. All scientists are white, and as the people of Africa believe, evil spirits do not want to have contact with them. That's all for today. Do you think that evil spirits are really afraid of white scientists? Write in the comments if you liked it. You can like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to not miss interesting materials.